Well, I think we've just about done the news. 25 minutes to 3, 8223 is the number if you want to get on board and be part of the program. I'm with you right through till 4 o'clock today. People that picked up their advertiser this morning might well have uh, read the front page, seen an article by Tory Shepherd, and uh, I suspect it might well have been a conversation starter on during the morning. Uh, the University of South Australia is uh, starting what they're calling a World First Male Studies course. Uh, the problem... However, and the criticism that's been levelled at the university is that those lecturers that are handling the course have been published on what's been described as a hate site. The site, uh, Voices for Men, is uh, accused of a, a host of uh, hateful uh, references to women. It's accused of propagating th theories that women routinely make up false rape allegations. That male bashing events uh, uh, are, you know, witch hunts. That women often get away with murder because they're women. The executive director of the, the managing director of a voice for men dot com is Paul Elam. Paul, are you aware of the controversy that your website has caused in South Australia in Adelaide here? Well, I am aware of the allegations. Um, I am certainly not aware of any truthfulness to them. Well, well, give people a little bit of background. Now, the University of South Australia here have made, created this course in male studies. I, I imagine your site, uh, avoiceformen.com, would have lauded that, uh, that um, uh, the, the beginning of something like that, that area of study. Uh, are you aware of the lecturer's work that's been published on your website and their association with this new course? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, the uh, individual, one individual I know that's in question is Dr. Miles Groff, who writes extensively on the experiences of young men in higher education, the fact that they are dropping out of higher education at an alarming rate. And we published one, I believe, maybe two of his articles on the side. Uh, why this is a matter of controversy um, is a much bigger picture than, than what you've been able to paint so far. Well, perhaps you might be able to fill in some of the gaps then, uh, Paul, because the problem is here, and I'll tell you what's been reported in, in, in South Australia, and you can give us your perspective as the person who operates the site. It's been reported that your site isn't just promoting uh, men's issues, it's actually actively campaigning against feminism, that women on the site are referred to as bitches and indeed much worse, and some things I can't say on the radio. Um, are you a site that advances male studies like in, in, in such a way that I'm sure the University of South Australia would be interested in, that is an academic pursuit, or is it part that and part a, a negative hate site against women? Well, it, you're asking a complicated question, but, and it deserves uh, is it? a detailed answer. Uh, what well, hang on. It? I asked if it's hateful. It, it should not be complicated about that. I, I can appreciate uh, that the university has entered into this area of study uh, by wanting to offer something that is unique, new and different. Uh, but I, uh, sure. I can understand now that they, I mean, look, they, they weren't happy to come on today because they'd probably be horrified if you to hear that you can't answer a question about whether your site is hateful without offering the qualifier that that's difficult to answer. Surely that's not difficult to answer. That's question if you keep interrupting. Well, far away. One, the allegation that we refer to women as, as any kind of foul name is absolutely untrue. And I would refer you to the 35 to 40 percent of women that make up the writers on our site and that make up our editorial board, including okay. Aaron Kitsy, who founded the women's shelter movement in England in 1971. Mm. What we're, what you're doing here is basically a wild goose chase orchestrated by a group of ideologues that are threatened by the idea of male studies coming into universities and threatening the feminist domination of the discourse on gender. That's all that's happening here. Is there, broadly speaking, Paul, the idea that there being a unique area of male studies, I, I don't find offensive at all. In fact, I think it's probably something that's due. I mean, in, and I'm sure you'd know the data better than I would about the deteriorating deterioration in men's health issues and things like that, because we don't specifically talk about men as a group in the same way that we do about women. And the canon of, of academia is, is divergent on, on that part. And I'm sure that's a point with which you'd agree. I guess the point is, it's about how that debate is, is conducted. And 
people can have a look for their, their cells at your website, but Absolutely. there would be a fear here in South Australia that a university here offering a course associated with something that has been listed as a hate site. It's you have been listed as a hate site, is that correct? You're, what you're saying is untrue. There's no connection whatsoever between a voice for men. One, your allegations here are untrue. And two, there's no connection whatsoever between a voice for men and the individuals in doing the initiative for male studies at the University of South Australia. It's just not there. But you appreciate that uh, the fact that lecturers that will be conducting that course have been published on your site, and therein lies some sort of association. You mentioned you're aware of the work there, and, and that, that's where this controversy has has risen. Uh, you know, that's where it has arisen. Uh, and and the, the fact <laughs> is, I understand you've been listed by the Southern Poverty Law Centre as uh, the civil rights organisation, Southern Poverty Law Centre, as a hate site. That is not true. Now, is that accurate? That is not accurate. That is not even close to accurate. As a matter of right. fact, uh, Arnold, um, Arthur Goldwag of the Southern Poverty Law, Law Center published an article several months ago explicitly stating that we were not listed as a hate site and that, in fact, that hmm. issues that we furthered were legitimate. Well, could you communicate then to the people listening, people here in South Australia, and and quash once and for all this the feeling that perhaps the university has got involved in something that they might otherwise not want to. This side of, we've heard this side of the story, read it in the paper. What's your take on this area of male studies, this new, uh, well, I guess it's new, new sort of way that academia, this new potential study option in South Australia? Well, it's a very important initiative to happen. The fact of the matter is that, that men do commit suicide at four times the rate of women. Men are falling out of education like flies. They are experiencing problems with alcohol and drug abuse and failure to launch video game addiction, uh, pornography addiction. There is a whole wide range of issues that are affecting men and boys in all of Western culture, not just Australia, but throughout the United States and Canada and Great Britain. And these areas have been, uh, they're in areas of neglect academically mm. because most of what has happened in our institutions of higher education for the study of sexual matters, sexual politics, gender studies have all been focused on women. And it's a good thing that we have had these studies and important to have. But in that, they have developed a, a, an actual dominance of the discourse. And what you will hear most feminists in academia claim now is that they have in men's issues covered, when in fact they don't. They do address some of them. But yep. they tend to address men as the problem rather than addressing men as having problems. Mm. And it is time that we institute scholarly pursuit, honest scholarly pursuit, in ways that seeks to ameliorate the problems that men are experiencing in this culture. And there's no reason whatsoever why this should be a threat to anyone. Is there a similar or any similar studies being conducted, not studies, but areas of, of inquiry at universities or courses available in the United States? Or is this literally a world first? Yeah, this is a world first. There are courses available in the United States. For instance, you have uh, Michael Kimmel's work. But what mm. it is is simply feminist ideology uh, disguised as the study of men and masculinity. And, and I guess in some respects it does study men and masculinity, but again, we go back to studying men and masculinity as a problem instead of understanding the male condition and seeking solutions for problems. There has never been an initiative quite like what is happening at the University of South Australia now. And what we're seeing is a group of ideologues, academic ideologues, feminists, that are threatened by the presence of this and want to undermine it. That's what Tory Shepard's article is about. This is what Michael Flood is out here talking about right now as a feminist ideologue. This isn't about a voice for men. It is about a website based in Texas halfway across the world that has a few articles on it uh, about these issues. This is about academic ideologues that see a threat coming to their domination of the discourse on gender issues, and they don't want it to happen. So they're pulling out all the stops to make sure that, that basically that male studies goes away and that they maintain their control. 
Paul Elam is the managing director of the website in question, voiceformen.com. Certainly people can visit the website and make their own decision about whether uh, that uh, the website is hateful, appropriate or otherwise. Uh, I'm interested now in introducing Dr. Michael Flood, as mentioned by Paul Elam. He's at the University of Wollongong. And about a mature debate about this area of male studies and, and whether uh, there is a worthwhile pursuit therein. Uh, Dr. Flood, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, is there? I mean, is, is male study something <laughs> worth the time of people investigating? Look, it depends what you mean. I mean, in a sense, you know, we, we've been doing research on men and masculinity. You know, that is on men's experience of social life and men's experiences as men for 30 or 40 years. There are encyclopedias, there are handbooks, there are eight or nine journals now focused on men's lives and men's experiences as men. So yeah. it's certainly not new to do research on men as men, and that's now become an important complement to the research on women and gender that was begun by the women's movement. And so, you know, so, you know, around the country, you know, what, what used to be called women's studies courses are now increasingly called women's and gender studies courses and oh. it's typical so, so for example I teach a third year subject called men and masculinities and mm. it's all about men's experience of social life so, that, so that's not new, what's new about this new male studies subject is is its politics, I suppose, that it, in a sense, is on the margins of a whole lot of academic scholarship on men and gender because of its politics, because it rejects some really basic, I suppose, feminist ideas about gender inequality, about the ways in which, you know, um, in our society, there are some ways in which men are disadvantaged and women are, um, are the ways in which men are advantaged and women are disadvantaged. So in a sense, I think it's, it's its politics, its ideology that distinguishes this initiative from what are already a whole lot of initiatives and subjects around the country and around the world. You could do just about any course at a university these days and there'll be a, a, an element of, of it, whether it's a political ideology or, or um, something else, well, that'll talk about feminism and a feminist approach to international relations, for example, and all sorts yeah, of sure. concepts where you wouldn't necessarily think of applying a, a gender approach. I guess the point that Paul Elam and others are making and, and the lectures that have been published on his website and that would be conducting this course is that, that you mentioned that there's been much study done about a male approach in male lives, but it certainly hasn't been singled out in a way or made as accessible to people to study like feminism is, is it? Uh, look, I, I think that used to be true. I don't think that's true now. Yeah, you know, okay. the fact that there's a subject at my university. There's okay. a there are there are 40 plus universities around the country. Many of them offer subjects offer, are focused on men and masculinity. And in fact, in Adelaide, the Fay Gale Centre for Research on Gender does some of the best research in the country, in the world, on men's lives and men's experiences. You know, studies men as fathers, as sons, looks at men's relations with women. I've done research on you know men's use of pornography, on men and body image, men's health, and so on. And so it's also important to recognise that this large body of research on men and masculinity has looked at areas of male disadvantage. It's looked, it's looked at the ways in which men suffer, in terms of men's health, in terms of obstacles to involved fathering, in terms of violence that men experience, often from other men and so on. So male disadvantage has also been a focus of this work. What's new about this new male studies subject is I think it wants to focus single-mindedly and exclusively on male disadvantage and it wants to ignore 40 years of research saying that in fact the story is a bit more complicated and in a sense it wants to push back against certainly some of the feminist influence in, you know, in gender studies. So, you know, I, my concern about this subject is not that I'm going to somehow lose my job. My concern about this subject is that it's going to misrepresent reality. It's not going to be very academically credible. And the people who pay, I think, the large sum of money involved to do this certificate are going to, in a sense, be ripped off because they're not necessarily going to get uh, robust and contemporary scholarship on men and gender. Dr. Michael Flood, thanks for your time. Thanks very much. Dr. Michael Flood from the University of Wollongong School of Social Sciences and Paul Eland, the Managing Director of voiceformen.com there talking about this, well, it depends what your perspective is. It might well be an emerging area of study. Certainly, uh, according to Dr. Flood, it's uh, somewhere we're making progress. Uh, but are we now teasing at the margins? That is the area of ma male studies. What do you think, folks? Uh, Eight double two three double o double o. Many will have uh, children, or at university, at school, or indeed they themselves might be studying. Uh, what's your feeling on the approach to scholars, the scholarly pursuits of gender bias?